see me my everything and I bless the day he came when he gave me dream for my each and every one of you. If you're visiting with us, and we do have visitors today, I want you to know you're the honored guest here at Mountain View Baptist Church. Make yourself a home. Let the Lord minister to your heart. All right, Brother Paul, if you'll pray with us, please, sir. Father, we're so thankful for this time we can come and worship and praise and, Father, fellowship with one another. Lord, I thank you for this church for what it means to this community, what it means to each family in this church, yes, what it means Lord. to each person in this church yes. and our individual lives. Yes. Father, I thank you for our pastor. Yes. I pray that you'd yes. be with him this morning as he preaches. I pray yes. that you would give him the words that we need to hear. Lord, give him the words from thy word. And Father, lift up his spirit that he might be in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Yes. And Father, give us exactly what we need today. Lord, we thankful, we're thankful for everyone that's here today. Yeah. I pray that you would bless each person that's here. Yeah. Father, if there's someone here that doesn't know you as Savior, I pray that you'd draw them unto thee. Yeah. Lord, I pray that you'd show them their need for salvation, that they, you'd show them the, the need in their hearts God for the Christ, Lord Jesus Lord, Christ. Christ. And Father, bring them to a saving knowledge of Christ. Lord, if there's someone here that's walking afar off from thee, I pray that you would uh, uh, help each one of them. Yeah to get closer to you. 
and walk closer to you and walk with you each day. Lord, I pray that you would just lift up your spirit, lift up your name, lift up yourself in this service this morning, and we'll praise you and worship you for it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, Brother Stoltz. You may be seated all over the building. Again, I want to take this opportunity to uh, extend to you a cordial and loving welcome to each and every family, each and every individual here at Mountain View Baptist Church, all right? I want to also congratulate, we'll do this at the end of the service, but before I go any further, I would like to congratulate our college and our high school graduates. We had K-5 graduation the other night, and also that's the little ones. They have only 12 more years of school after, after K-5, but uh, we congratulate all of them as well. We'll recognize our high school and college graduates right after the service this morning, all right? And then this Thursday at uh, 7 p.m. is high school graduation right here in the sanctuary. Everybody is welcome to attend the high school graduation. The award ceremony will be that morning at 9 a.m. in the Christian Academy, all right? After service tonight, we're going over to the fellowship hall. We encourage everybody to bring a well-filled basket. Everybody's welcome to stay. It's a birthday celebration, and so uh, we'd love for you to stay. You can be with us, and if you're visiting, you can stay and join the fellowship and enjoy a good time, all right? I want the ushers to come on in. We'll get the regular tithe and regular offering, and we recognized the other night uh, Mr. John Dovey's dad had passed away. And, John, we've been praying for you and your family. And at the request of the family, Brother John particularly, we have, uh, instead of doing flowers or a plant, that uh, they requested the money be given to Mountain View Christian Academy. So thank you so much. We appreciate it. I have that $100 check right here that we're going to put in for the Mountain View Christian Academy from the church in honor of uh, Brother Mr. John Dovey's dad, all right? So God bless you. The ushers have bulletins. You give and get one of these bulletins as well, all right? Go right ahead. Smith, I believe, is in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I believe that's what he told me. And Brother Jonathan Smith is preaching all day over here for um, for Brother um, brother brother Chuck Hyatt over here in Chesney. So uh, we got some of our men gone preaching. You pray for him. The Lord will bless him. Brother Chris is home, and we're glad he's home. All right, God bless you. Pray for us, Chris. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for letting us gather in your house this morning. Dear Lord, I pray that you'll just use these tithes and offerings to your will, dear Lord. What honor and honor it is to be able to tithe, dear Lord. Dear Lord, I love you. I just ask you to please be with our pastor today and, and, and Miss Lynn. Thank you for, for everything that they do for us, dear Lord. Thank you for this church. I pray that you'll be with the message today, dear Lord, and open our hearts, dear Lord. If there's anyone saved, uh, not saved, dear Lord, you please save them for us. You turn them too late. I pray that you'll be with the sick and the shut-in, dear Lord, wherever they may be that, that can't come to church. 
And dear Lord, I just pray all these things in your precious holy name. I ask these things in your holy name. Amen. Amen. All right. Sing it out, choir. Sing it out. All right. Let's all stand. 76. <laughs>
Our groups are going to get ready, and I want to say that there are there are three sign-up sheets down front. Everybody needs to be informed about them. One of them is for the junior camp. That's in July. Teen camp's in July. And then the father-son retreat, which will be September. Uh, all three of those sheets are down front. We'd love for you to start signing up, and we'll greatly appreciate that, all right? While they're getting ready, one final word. You know the interstate uh, development project, the enlargement project, widening project, all that's going on, and we're already getting uh, 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 businesses on the uh, construction of a new Red Cross. I don't know if you know this, but most of you should know that highway's coming right through there, and uh, they're taking, they bought some of our land, or well, they say they bought it. I don't know what they did. How about took it? Somebody say amen. Yeah, they took some of our land. They took some of our land and uh, gave us a little bit of money for it. But uh, so uh, hurry up and say to, today that the Red Cross has to come down. And so we're going to have to put another one up. And so we're probably going to put it up farther this way because of the elevation of the exit ramp. So saying all that, if anybody's interested in the Red Cross, uh, you may not be, but, uh, you know, it's pretty well a sentimental uh, piece of uh, piece of decor, and uh, if you're interested in it, you see me, okay? Because we may just give it to you if you're going to put it up. If you're going to let it lay on the ground, we're probably not going to let you do that. But uh, you don't have to light it. You can still let it stand somewhere. You've got to put it back in the ground, all right? So we're going to build a brand new one, probably going to go to about 50 feet rather than about 25 or 30. What did you say? It was 30 how many? 30, that's 35. We're probably going to have to go 50 because of the elevation. So we're looking forward to it, really. And uh, we'll get it all done, but if you're interested in the old, if you're, hey, I like that. If you're interested in the old rugged cross, come see me. All right, <laughs> all right come on, y'all. Sing. Sing. Yeah. I can't forget when God saved my soul.
And also, I want to remind the young people, uh, right around Memorial Day, I believe it's uh, Saturday, September 25th. No, not September. Uh, yes, no, wait a minute. Let me get it right. I'll find it. Yeah, May 25th. Uh, Saturday, May 25th. Right down here at the Cal Penns Memorial Park. The young people are supposed to be singing that morning, all right? So don't, don't forget that, all right? Y'all ready? Come on. Do you remember when you were drowning in a sea of sin, going down for the last time before you called upon his name? He reached out his nail-pierced hand. He lifted you out. So remember where you were back then and praise him for where you are now. And give him the glory for what he's done in your heart. away the sin and strife and gave a new start he took your broken life and he made you complete so take off your crowns of glory and cast them at the Savior's feet. Do you remember when with all your heart you But you didn't think that Jesus You'll never be satisfied with anything less. I remember. Amen. Do you remember when with all your heart you longed to serve Him? But you didn't think that Jesus could really use someone like you. Oh, but look how he's used your life since he brought you out. So remember where you were back then and praise him for where you are now. And give him the glory. Savior's feet. So take off those crowns of glory and cast 
him at the Savior's feet. Amen. Thank you very much. You say amen to that? Great, great song. Wonderful song. We appreciate it. I want to recognize today uh, Heather and Heather and uh, Ryan. Would you stand up? I didn't even know you were here but just a minute ago. God bless you. And uh, been on the honeymoon in a way. Congratulations again on your marriage. God bless you so much. Glad you're here. You can be seated. Thank you for being here. Brother John, do you want to say a word? No, you didn't want to say a word. All right. Take your Bible, Leviticus chapter 16. John said, so John said somebody said something about getting married. I'm standing up. <laughs> Leviticus chapter 16, everybody. Hope you'll follow with me today in the Bible. And don't let me forget now we're going to recognize these graduates right after service, all right? Leviticus chapter 16 is a great, great chapter in the Word of God. It is full of typology, full of symbolism, full of great uh, Old Testament shadows, all right? Shadow, go ahead. You want to say a word? Go ahead. Yes. I'm I. Yeah, yeah. That's right, that's right. Amen, amen. Yeah, that's right. Yes, ma'am. Amen, amen. Yes. And if you're here today, you're here today and you've been out of fellowship with the Lord, I'd like to tell you something. He'll not throw you away either. Sure will not. Leviticus chapter number 16, look if you will, in verse number one, and the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron when they offered before the Lord and died. And the Lord said unto Moses, speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all, not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat which is upon the ark that he die not, for I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen coat and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh and shall be girded with a linen girdle and with a linen mitre shall he be attired. These are holy garments. Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water and so put them on. He shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. And Aaron shall offer his bullock of, of the sin offering which is for himself and make an atonement for himself and for his house. And he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. Underline that, please, it's important. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. One goat was to be sacrificed on the altar. The other goat, Brother Randy, was to be set free. So you have a slain goat, but then you have a scapegoat. All of them point to one beautiful picture. And that beautiful picture is the redemption that is you and I ours because of the life and the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll get to all that in a little bit. Look, if you will, in verse number 21. Verse 21. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities, I like that word all, 
of the children of Israel and all their transgressions in all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send them away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. Look at verse 22. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. Look at verse number 34. And this shall be an everlasting statue unto you to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year. And, and he did as the Lord commanded Moses. I want to use this chapter and I covet your prayers and your help, all right? And I want to preach on Jesus, our scapegoat. That's my title. Jesus, our scapegoat. You may ask me why I am happy. So I'll just tell you why. Because my sins are gone. And when I meet the scoffers who ask me where they are, I say, my sins are gone. They're underneath the blood on the cross of Calvary, as far removed as darkness is from dawn. In the sea of God's forgetfulness, that's good enough for me. Praise God, my sins are gone. When Satan comes to tempt me and tries to make me doubt, I say, my sins are gone. You got me into trouble, but Jesus got me out. I'm glad my sins are gone. They're underneath the blood on the cross of Calvary. As far removed as darkness is from dawn in the sea of God's forgetfulness, that's good enough for me. Praise God, my sins are gone. Nobody can say that except a redeemed child of God. Leviticus chapter 16 presents before you and I a most solemn, and interesting of all the Hebrew ceremonies. It presents God's laws for the great day of atonement that was to happen, Brother Ben, once every year. That was a day that the high priest offered sacrifice. And in offering sacrifice, he, he, he presented the blood at the mercy seat. And you know what happened, Brother Justin? God forgave the sin of Israel for an entire year. And that word atonement, look at me, okay? It means a covering. It means a covering. And did you know that this day of atonement, it's as if it were, Brother Brian, it covered their sins. It sheltered their sins for an entire year. Well, I have news for you today. Uh, we're not in Jewish Old Testament and we're not under the Old Testament economy I've got something more than atonement I've got something more than a covering or a shelter for my sin I tell you what I have I have free I have full and thank God I have final and forever forgiveness from God my sins are not covered hey my sins are not covered. Thank God my sins are gone. They're gone. They're gone, all right? Stay with me, okay? Here in Leviticus 16, it is rich with typology and rich with symbolism. Let me go ahead and skip a lot of that, all right? In Leviticus 16, verse number 8 and 9, you have one of the goats, and they were slain for a sin offering. That is the means or the very essence of redemption. I said that is the means or the very essence of redemption. In verse 8 and 9, 
that gate, that goat was slain. Its blood was shed, and that blood was sprinkled on the mercy seat, on the vessels, and even upon, as it were, the congregation. And so that goat represents redemption in its essence or redemption in its payment or redemption in its sacrifice. And aren't you glad, thank God, not by the bulls of goats and of heifers, but by his own blood, by his own blood, he obtained eternal redemption for you and I. I'm simply trying to tell you, I've been redeemed and you've been redeemed and our redemption was because of the shed blood of the Son of God, amen. But not only was there one goat that was slain, but in verse number 10 and verse 20 through 22, there was another goat, Brother David, that had all of the sins of Israel are conveyed or transferred, here's the word, or imputed to it, imputed to it. And Brother Randy, the high priest, would lay his head upon that second goat and as it were to impute or to transfer, to transfer or to reckon all the sins on that second goat. And you know what happened? They took that goat and led it by a fit man out into a land that was not inhabited. I got to tell you about this, all right? You got a little bit of time, don't you? That fit man was a man that was chosen out to lead that goat. How far, preacher? Not inside the city, but beyond the city and farther and farther and farther away. He led that goat all the way out unto a land that was not inhabited. Now let me tell you about that land, all right? It was a desert land. It was a dry land. Alan, it was a barren land. It was a forsaken land. Nobody lived there. Nobody resided there. It was desolate. It was dark. It was lonely. It was, it was, it was far away. And you know what they tell me, Brother Kyle? They led that goat as far as they could go until it got completely out of sight. And when that goat would get completely out of sight, the man, the fit man that led that goat, he would get word back to the first station that he passed. And he would say, fly the white flag. The goat's gone. The goat's out of sight. Out of sight, out of mind, out of the city. I never, never, never to be remembered again. And they'd get word all the way back to the temple that the goat was gone. You know what this teaches us? It teaches us not basically the essence or the payment or the sacrifice of our redemption, but you know what it teaches us? It teaches us the effect of God's redemption. You say, what is the effect? i tell you what the effect is. He not only paid for our sin, Thank God he put them away. I said he not only, y'all help me, okay? He not only paid for our sin, but thank God because of his shed blood as represented in the goat, the scapegoat, he took them all away. I said he took them all away. And so you have the essence of our redemption and then thank God you have the effect of our redemption, amen. I'm trying to hurry, all right? I'm trying to hurry. I got a lot to say. I mean, a lot to say today. If I can get it all said. One goat was slain. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 9, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. I wish I had my Sunday night crowd. Once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. That's the goat that was slain. But what about, Brother Derry, the goat that was sent away? Well, what about this verse? Surely he hath borne our grief and carried our soul, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of his heart. How about John 1, 29? Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. And that's what? 
he takes away. I said he taketh away of the sin of the world. Thank God for the sacrifice. Thank God for the payment. Thank God for the shed blood. Thank God for the cross, amen. I said, thank God for the cross, but that cross affected our life in such a profound and a miraculous way, and that is the fact of the effect of that cross and the effect of God's redemption and the effect of that shed blood, and that effect is absolute, total, forever, forever and ever. Thank God for forgiveness, amen. Your sins are gone. Your sins are gone. I thought about this. I want to. I want to. I want to. Want to slow down a little bit. I thought about that land that's not inhabited. Look, if you will, in verse number twenty-two, everybody. Look at verse twenty-two. I'll get a little wider. You look at verse twenty-two. Verse twenty-two. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness there are others that believe Miss Alice that that goat was thrown over a precipice and died and if that's the case Brother Mark when it died all that sin that was transferred and imputed of which I had a Bible reader it died as well but then there are others who believe, Brother Mar, it may not have died. It just stayed out there in the wilderness until eventually it died. But here's what got me. Here's what got me, Brother Mike Mathis. If it's a land that's not inhabited, you stay with me, okay? If it's a land that's not inhabited, then can nobody see the goat? Nobody can talk to the goat. Nobody can converse with the goat. Nobody can train the goat. Nobody can bother the goat. In other words, everything that happens with that goat is left to itself, all right? It's left to itself. And God the Holy Ghost blessed my heart. And he said, son, there's nobody out there in that land that's not inhabited. They can't even talk about. They can't even talk about that goat being there but because it's a land that's not inhabited. And I want to tell you, friend, I want to tell you that nobody on this side of heaven has any business of talking about, I said talking about our sins that are gone. Amen. You've got, you've got, you've got, you've got, here's what you have. Here's what you have in this typology. Cain, you've got the blood of redemption. You've got the blood of redemption. But hey, church, you've got the blessing of redemption. Hey, look at me, church, look at me. I praise God for the blood. I mean, I praise God for the blood. No sign that was shed on the cross of Calvary for my sins, for your sins. But Brother Nathan, it doesn't stop there. Hallelujah, it doesn't stop there. It's not just the blood of redemption. Thank God it's the blessing of redemption. Amen. Do you know you know you've been forgiven freely? Do you know you've been forgiven fully? Do you know you've been forgiven forever? Do you know you've been forgiven? There's a finality to it. My sins are gone, folks. And I tell you, it's hard for us to accept that. It's hard for us to grasp that. It's hard for us to understand that. Miss Peggy, it's hard for us to appreciate that because I tell you, the old devil, say amen somebody, the old devil, he loves to bring them back up. That's why he's the accuser of the brethren and anybody else that brings them back up, guess what, that's what he is too. He's an adversary, he's related to the accuser of the brethren. Hey friend, look up here, the things I committed before God saved me, guess what? They're gone. I said they're gone. That God can't remember them. God don't talk about them. God doesn't bring them up. They're, they laid on the head of that goat, and that goat was, was sent out. That goat, where did that goat go? It went to a land not inhabited where there wasn't nobody around, where nobody had a tent, nobody had a dwelling. Nobody had a resident. 
that goat's out there uh, to die with what's been transferred to it. That goat's out there uh, to die with the imputed sin of all of Israel. I wonder sometimes that some people can't enjoy their present because they're robbed by their past. God, thank God for the scapegoat. Thank God for the scapegoat. It lets us know the blessings of redemption. You have in verse 20, look at it. Look at verse 20. This is the introduction of the scapegoat. Look at verse 20, everybody. And when he hath made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle congregation and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. Now don't miss this. Don't miss this. That's the introduction of the scapegoat. Brother Randy, it was only after the first goat was slain. You got this? It's all with the harvester, a part of the same redemption. Y'all help me today, okay? It's all a part of the same redemption. But the, 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 the scapegoat landed was not introduced until after the first goat was slain. That leads us to, that leads us to the belief and leads us to the Bible fact that we're looking at not the essence, not the essence of redemption, but we are looking at the effects of redemption. Not, not, not the blood, not necessarily the blood, that's verse 20. We're looking at the blessing of redemption. And I tell you, if anybody ought to be happy, if anybody ought to shout the victory, if anybody ought to have any joy, if anybody ought to have a smile on their face, hey, you think about it. Think about it. And I'm not, and I'm not the devil, and I'm not trying to be the devil's advocate, but you think about that catalog, that long ledger, that long list of filthy words, filthy deeds, filthy actions, sinful debauchery. But when God saved you, I want to tell you now, when God saved you and you trusted Christ, not only did you get the blood of redemption, but thank God you got the blessing of redemption. Not only did you get the essence of redemption, but friend, you've got the effects of redemption. And that effect is that your sins are forever gone. They're gone. I'm gonna show you some more verses in a minute. That's gonna bless your heart, all right? You've got the introduction of the scapegoat. Secondly, you have the identification of the scapegoat. with the scapegoat. Look at verse 21. I do have an outline. Verse 21, Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the light goat, confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel, and what, under the word all, and all their transgressions in all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat, and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man, into the wilderness. You've got the introduction of the scapegoat. You have the identification with the scapegoat. And then you have the imputation of our sin upon the scapegoat. For he hath made him, God help me today, for he hath made him to be sin who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. All we like sin have gone astray and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He not only took your sins, he took my sin. The sins of the entire world was imputed to our Savior, our Redeemer, our Christ. By the way, what a wonderful salvation. What a grand, glorious plan of redemption. And if anybody, again, has anything to rejoice about, if anybody has anything to celebrate, if anybody has anything to be glad about, it's the crowd I'm looking at. I said, it's the crowd. I'm looking at. Thank God we've been redeemed. Brother Mac, we've been redeemed. But not only have we been redeemed, our sins are gone. Amen. You've got the introduction of the scapegoat. You have the identification with the scapegoat laying on the hands. You have the imputation of sin upon the scapegoat. But then the last part, and I basically already preached it, 
you have the instant removal of the scapegoat to a land not inhabited. Are you with me? To a land not inhabited. I'm looking for some verses, right? right? If I can help, if God help me to find them right here. I'm talking to you about the, what, what all happened when redemption took place. I will say this again. Our, our forgiveness is free. Say amen. amen. Our forgiveness was full. He said all their sin. And our forgiveness was final. It was final. And thank God it was forever. Amen. amen. I, I, uh, I want to I wanna magnify just a minute. I got a lot of notes up here. I'll make sure I don't want to get anything else. I could tell you about the Syrian goat, but I won't do that right now. I, I want to I look at verse 22 again. I want to look at verse 22, everybody. Look, if you will, verse 22, please. And the goat shall bear upon him all the iniquities unto a land not inhabited. He shall let go the goat in the wilderness. And by the way, they did that once a year to cover the sins. That land not inhabited where nobody's at. That goat was left alone in the world. And by the way, they didn't retrieve it. And I studied also, Brother Ben, that it couldn't find its way back. I, that, that, that should have hit you right there. I said it couldn't find its way back. The sin that was imputed, I'm telling you, it was gone. It was gone and gone forever. But I kept thinking about that land not inhabited. I kept meditating on that, Brother David, stay on that land that's not inhabited. He said, well, what'd you come up with? Well, I'll tell you, you just keep your seat, all right? Here's a land. Here's a land that definitely fits that bill. I'm trying to get my, my chapter. As far as the east is from the west so far hath he removed our transgressions from us I think brother Brian that would be a land not inhabited now stay with me okay why did it say north and south because the north south measurement is finite but not so with the east and west measurement. If we travel north from a given point, at least sooner or later, we will reach the North Pole, a definite point. And then if we travel south, Brother David, eventually we're going to reach the South Pole, another definite point. But the Holy Spirit, he didn't say as far as the north is from the south. I wish I had a Bible reader. Miss Michelle, he said, as far as the east is from the west, east and west are a different matter altogether. We can start to travel east and there is no point on the compass so long as we continue in that same direction that it's going to be said that now we're traveling west. Or we can, I wish I had somebody. Or, Dr. Love, we can start to travel west no matter how long we continue. There is, if we stay on that same course, there is no point on the compass where we then begin to travel east. West is always west. And east is always east. So do you know what that verse is saying? Does anybody know what that verse is saying? Let's read it again. As far as the east is from the west, it's non, non-calculable. You can't measure it, friend. You can't measure it. I'd say that's a land not inhabited. Where, where are my sins? I feel like preaching. Where are your sins? They're gone, friend. They're forgiven. They're abolished. They're taken away. And guess what? 
They're, they're, you know where they are? In a land not inhabited. Go north, son. You'll reach the North Pole. Go south. Eventually, you'll reach the South Pole. But you go ahead and start east. You start going east, and you keep going east, and you tell me when you get west. You can't. Behold, you, 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 you mathematicians. Behold, you, you intellectuals. I'm not being smart. I'm being funny, though. Behold, you intellectuals. Behold, you surveyors or surveyors' assistants. Behold, you that know how to navigate and use every tool known to man. Measure that. It's like Charles Haddon Spurgeon said, trying to measure the word God so love. You can't measure the word so love. I want to tell you how far your sins are gone. Let me tell you how fully you're forgiven. Let me tell you how finally you're forgiven. Let me tell you how forever, forever you're forgiven. You're forgiven as far as the east is from the west. Can't calculate it and can't measure it. Take your Bibles, everybody. Take your Bibles and go to Micah chapter 7. Please, quickly, I'm trying to hurry. Micah chapter 7. All right? Zechariah's the end. Back up. You'll find Micah eventually, and so will I. Micah, where'd it go? All right, help me, help me, Lord. All right, Hosea, Joel, Amos, there it is. Micah chapter 7 is page 951 in a Schofield Bible. Stay with me, okay? 951. In the Schofield Bible, where's this land not inhabited? Who, 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 can, who can tell us, Derek, about this land that's not inhabited? Well, I think the psalmist told us, Josiah, about that land not inhabited. But look what Micah said. Look what Micah said. Verse number 18. Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. Watch it. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. I wish I had an amen right there. He will subdue our iniquities. He will subdue our iniquity and thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. And hallelujah goes right there. First distance is incalculable east to west. Now watch this depth right here. I've done my homework. I hope you can appreciate that I did a little homework. Into the depths of the sea. I believe, Brother David, I believe that fit, that description about a land that's not inhabited. The depths of the sea, preacher. By the way, Brother Stoltz, he didn't say, I'll put your sins on the shore for everybody to stumble over and to bring them back up. Say amen. He didn't say, I'll put your sins in the shallows for them to be brought back up. He didn't say, I'll put them out there where the storm can bring them up. He said, I'm going to put them in the depths of the sea. You say, well, how deep is that, preacher? Well, they tell me, Dr. Love, that the deepest abyss is the word, the very bottom, the very abyss is an immeasurable deep space it's in the Pacific Ocean. It's 36,161 feet down to the bottom. 36,000, I'm not born yet, am I? 161 feet down to the bottom. Brother Cam, that calculates to 6.8 miles at the very abyss, at the very bottom of the Pacific Ocean. Say, I still can't get it, preacher. Well, how about this then? If you were to take Mount Everest, the largest mountain in the world in the Himalaya. You know what? You know what the, the measurement of that is? It's only 29,029 feet. If you were to take Mount Everest and put it in the deepest part of the ocean, watch me. Guess what? If you were to do that, if you were to drop Mount Everest in the, this deepest part of the ocean, its peak, the peak of Mount Everest, would still be one mile underwater. He said, well, well, I'm going to dive and I'm going to bring up somebody's past. I'm going to dive down there and I'm going to drag up all them sins. Now, I told you I did my homework and the deepest man dive that has ever been accomplished is only 1,000 
and 90 feet. Three football fields is 900 feet, so it went beyond that. It was an Egyptian man in the Red Sea. Watch this, Brother David. It took him 12 minutes, free diving, 12 minutes to reach that depth. Took him 15 hours to come back up. 15 hours to come back up because of something they call nitrogen narcosis. He didn't want excess nitrogen in his brain and he didn't want decompression sickness, so he had to come up slow. 15 hours to come back up, and all he went, Brother Stoltz, was 1,090 feet. 1,090 feet. And you're telling me that you're going to go to 36,161 feet? You're going to go 6.8 miles and bring up somebody's sin? Guess what I got news for you? Not happening, friend. My sins are gone. They're gone. They're gone. He said, do you have any more? Well, what about, what about, and I, I don't have time. I'm out of time. What about Isaiah 38, 17? Where are they? Behind his back. You can't see something that's behind your back. Where are they? Isaiah 43, Isaiah 44, they're blotted out. Where are they? Jeremiah 31, I remember them no more. Jeremiah 31, I remember them no more. What about, what about Hebrews 8, 12? I remember them no more. Here's a good one. What about Hebrews 10, 2? There's no more consciousness of sin. No more consciousness of sin. But here's my favorite and I'm finished. Here's my favorite. I'm gonna put all my notes up. Here's my favorite. Here's my favorite. John's baptizing. John's baptizing in the river of Jordan. And he's got a convert in his hand. There he is. And he looks and he sees Jesus Christ walking on the shore. You know what he said? He doesn't say east and west. He doesn't say the depths of the sea. He didn't say behind God's back. He's got that man about baptizing. And he said, hold it right here. Behold the Lamb of God that does what? That does what? That does what? He takes them away. He takes them away. Where'd he take them? Where'd he take them? To a land not inhabited. I'm not sure where he took them, but I guarantee you this, you can't find them. They're gone. Do you know that John 129 is a very good significant reference back to Leviticus 16, the goat that they took away? It's all, hey, the Bible's a beautiful book. The Bible's a wonderful book. It'd do us good to turn the phone off and read it once in a while. I'm not gonna quit because some of y'all wanna go so bad, so I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting. Was at the old time altar when God came in my heart and now my sins are gone. The Lord took full possession. The devil did depart. I'm glad my sins are gone. They're underneath the blood, come on Lord, on the cross of Calvary. As far removed as darkness is from dawn. In the sea of God's forgetfulness, that's good enough for me. I said that's good enough for me. Praise God, my sins are gone. Sins are gone. We can shout about it. We ought to be glad about it. We ought to tell somebody else about it. All because, all because Jesus is our scapegoat. He's our scapegoat. Can we try this? Can we try this? 318? 318, good your book, ready? Can we try it? Let's stand. Let's stand. Here you go, brother Kyle. Here you go. All right. 318, you know the word. It's not in, it's not in your white book. Our song leader's gonna do his best. 318. 318, yes, sir. With my sins are gone. Do you know it? You ask why I am happy. Come on, so come on. I'll just tell you why before. Sing it, sing it. Sing it. And when I think the come on, come on, come on. I swear they are, I come on, church, come on. My sins are gone. They are underneath the blood of the cross of Calvary. As far as the darkness is from dawn. In the sea of God's forgiveness is good enough for me. Praise God, my sins are gone. Twas at the old time altar when God came in my heart. I'm down here, boys. 
Just a moment. Thank you very much. It's still early. It really is. It's early. Again, let me congratulate publicly. I want to congratulate publicly all of our K-5 graduates from the other night there at the Mountain View Christian Academy, all the little boys and girls that graduated K-5 kindergarten. I want to congratulate right now. I have two, two young ladies that are here. Their families are here. These are our college graduates this year. And if anybody... We, we, if we fail to recognize you, then let our sister know, and I promise you we will do our best to get it straightened out, all right? I'd like for uh, Michaela Lee to come up here, and I'd like for Miss Darian Spencer to come on up here, if you will, all right? Ladies, if you'll come on up here, and uh, we, we, we appreciate these girls finishing their college degrees. God bless both of them. And uh, now we, we, we normally used to give Bibles, but now we're giving you all a devotional Congratulations to you. God bless your heart. And uh, let me make sure I got the names here. Yep, I got it. Darren, congratulations to you. Let's give them a great big round of applause, all right? Thank you, ladies. Thank you very much. All right. Now, let me, uh, well, I got my names here. Let, let's get our high school graduates. Uh, hand me a bulletin. Hand me a bulletin. I can just read them better that way. All right. Uh, I'll go ahead and call you up. High school graduates this year include Miss Haley Edwards, uh, Mr. Malachi, come on when I call your name, Mr. Malachi Galloway, Miss Lauren Jordan, Miss Lauren Riddle, uh, Mrs. Randy Schultz, and Mr. Zachary Williamson. Let's have all of these come up here and we'll recognize our high school graduates. And uh, this is from any school. We're just proud of these kids. Hey, in this day and hour, we're proud kids finishing their education, amen. Once again, do we have them all? We got Miss Haley Edwards. We get Mr. Malachi Galloway. We got Miss Lauren Jordan. Uh, Miss uh, Lauren Riddle. Uh, Miss Randy Schultz and Mr. Zachary Williamson. All of these are graduating high school this year, 2019. Let's give them a great big round of applause, everybody. Hey, stay where you at. Stay where you at, okay? All right, Miss Haley Edwards, where are you? God bless you, Miss Haley. All right, now these young people, Mr. Malachi Galloway, uh, we got Bibles and devotionals for some of y'all, for all of you. Miss Lauren Jordan. All right, Miss Lauren, God bless your heart. And let's see here. Uh, Miss Lauren Riddle, God bless your heart. Congratulations, baby. A couple more. Miss Randy Schultz, right here. And I believe, I don't have to look. That's Zachary, all right. Once again, all right, please, thank you. Thank you. God bless you. 2019, life has just begun. You can be seated, all right? Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for being here. College graduates, high school graduates. Thank you, Miss Willis, for getting all that stuff ready. Thank you, because uh, there's a lot that goes into getting all that ready. We appreciate it. Let's stand all over the building.